Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yue Li, and currently I'm a fourth year PhD student, supervised by Professor Jin Lingxue at University of New South Wales, Australia. Today I'm going to introduce a new program slicing technique, which is called program tailoring. So the first question might be, why we need a new program slicing technique? Or we can say, does program slicing matter? The answer is yes. Programming slicing was introduced in 1981, and now it has about 4,000 citations. It has been demonstrated that slicing is useful for program debugging, understanding, analysis, testing, and so on. And it is also shown that slicing is not only useful for the communities of program languages and software engineers. Some techniques from the other research areas, such as system, network, or even database, are inspired from program slicing. So now let's briefly see how this successful technique looks like. For slicing, the most important keyword is called criteria, which usually consists of a program point with some interesting variables. So the job of slicing is to find the parts of the program which have only impact on the given criteria, and it, this can be achieved by recursively finding out the programs, uh, the statements and the variables which has control and data dependence on the given criteria. And as a result, the original program could be sliced into a program with zero much smaller size by removing those pretty irrelevant statements. Users are happy with the slice program because it is zero much con controllable. So now you can see the core part of slicing is criteria, like this one. Okay. So however, in the real world, there are many applications and many clients that do not generate the criteria like this one. Okay. With a single program point, these clients can also generate other interesting information, such as temporal sequences. For example, if a type state analysis client, this client does not only generate the error statement at a single program point, if you if you say you cannot write to a file after you close it, it also generates the temporal sequences leading to these error statements. More generally, if we have API protocol analysis, it can generate more general temporal sequences. It's about API calls. It's about the semantics of a program. Actually, the program API pro protocol analysis is a very active research topic, just the same as program slicing. That means we have rich sources of temporal sequences in the real world. Now we have a very interesting problem, that is, what would happen if the program slicing community encounters API protocol analysis community. You know, before, we slice the program by the traditional criteria, which is your program point. But what would happen if we slice a program by the temporal sequences, which can be generated by the API protocol analysis? The answer is our EQ paper, program tailoring slicing by sequential criteria. So the next question would be, why we need program tailoring. Let's use a simple program debugging task as an example to explain. Assume there's a control flow graph of some program, and this error statement at this single program point is reported by some client. And after program slicing, we got a sliced program which seems more controllable than the original one. And however, if the statements in the slice program are distributed in different methods or even different classes, it is still hard for the users to debug. However, for the same client, it's if the client does not only generate error statement, it can also generate temporal sequence leading to this error statement. Then program tailoring would consider the whole temporal sequences as the sequential criteria, which we call SC for short to tailor a program. And for example, if the first program point statement A in SC is in a branch, and statement B is in method, which is target method at some virtual call site. If the client is also signed, then program tailoring's job is to find out all the statements in the program, in the passes, which visits A, B, C in the given order. If the client is signed, that means all the statements, all the statements which are reachable from the other branches, other branches in O, you can see uh, the virtual calls as branches. All these statements could be removed. So the tailored program 
is much easier to debug because users do not need to track back following this SC because sequential criteria irrelevant statements. Oh, you can also see they do not need to track back following this semantics irrelevant statements. After understanding this, it's easier to understand the applications of program theory. And that is, given some client API tokenize, it may generate the output temporal sequences leading to the error statements or not. And then traditional slicing rigid techniques would consider the last program point in the output to take a to slice the program. However, program tailoring would consider the whole temporal sequences as the sequential criteria to tailor a program. And as I have just explained, based on the slice program, program tailoring is useful to support program debugging and understanding by removing those as the sequential criteria irrelevant statements. And in, uh, in addition to this one, due to the good scalability of program tearing, it is also useful for the program analysis task, which I will later explain it. So for now, some of you may find out it seems that the power of program tearing is restricted by the given sequential criteria, by the given, by the given clients. So what you think is correct? Because in the real world, given the same program generate, the longer your sequential criteria is, the more precise program theory would be because more irrelevant statements are removed. However, in, the, in practice, different clients may generate SC sequential criteria with different lenses. Right? To improve the generality of program theory, can we design a method? which can automatically less than any given sequential criteria standard regardless of any given class to improve the precision of program tailoring? The answer is yes. We design method is called the S extension to achieve this goal, which I will talk about later. So now I think it's the right time to see the overview of program tailoring. Our framework is called Tailor, which consists of two major parts. First one is SE based extension, you just see this, and the other one is SE based data flow analysis to tailor the program. So, given a program and the client such as the API protocolized view output some raw sequential criteria. And after SE extension, we extended this sequential criteria into the extended SE with your more uh, longer length. And then we feed them to the SE based data flow analysis to tailor the program. Finally, we get to the program. That's the overview. So now let's briefly see the basic idea of these two techniques. The first one is how to automatically extend any given SC. So now initially, the extended SC is the same as the original one. And for the first program point, statement B in the given SC, we find out which class this statement results in. And then we find out all the allocation size statically of this class P. So now you can see these two allocation size can be seen as a kind of semantically predominates this statement B. This is because you know, if you want to at runtime visit some statements in some class, you must create the object of this class first, and then you can visit this statement, right? So in other words, you can never reach statement B at runtime through another path. This is called invisible path, invisible path. So now we can consider these two allocation sites and add them to the extended SC. If in the later phase, the tailor considered this extended SC, that means that all the statements in the invisible path can be removed. Okay, we can repeat the same algorithm. For example, it's in class Q and the allocation site of Q is here and then we consider the allocation site and add it to the extended SC. The algorithm repeats until we reach the entry of the program. And now you can see, after SC extension, the extended SC length is longer. And in later phase, if we tailor a program based on this extended SC, more irrelevant statements would, re would be removed. Then we fit this extended SC to the later SC based data flow analysis to tailor a program. How we do this? Actually, it consists of two parts. One is called bottom analysis and top-down analysis. And intuitively, for each node in the bottom-up analysis, bottom facts intuitively tells you what, what is subsequence you may visit in the future. 
and the top-down facts tell you what you have statistics you have visited in the past. What does it mean? Let's take an example to explain it. You have seen this case before, and now this sequential criteria as is A, B, C. Bottom-up analysis starts from the last program point in the sequential criteria, and it stops at the entry end of the program. And intuitively, for each node, bottom-up facts tells you what you may visit in the future. So for this node, it may visit the subsequent C in the future. But for this node, you may visit B, C through this path, this sequence in the future, and you may visit C through this path in the future, right? And then we apply the top-down analysis that tells you what you have visited in the past. So for example, for this node, you have visited sequence A through this path, but for this node, you have visited sequence A, B through this path, and A through another path. So that's the reason why the bottom fact is A, B, and A. So for any node, if it is reserved in the finally tailored program, depends on if the two facts can compose the given SC. Okay, for example, for this node, it is reserved in the tailored program because it can compose A, B, C, but this is not the case for this node. So in the tailored program, we remove this irrelevant statement. Actually, in practice, due to the performance soundness issues, uh, we do not, uh, the, the real essay based data flow analysis is a little different from this one, but the basic idea is still the same. We have implemented Taylor is suit framework, which is a static analysis framework in Java, uh, for Java, and uh, to let Taylor achieve very good precision in practice, we encode our data flow analysis into the flow functions of FDS framework, which can make Taylor achieve full context and flow sensitivity. And now, Tether has been released as open source tool at its website. Now, let's see how Tether behaves in the real world. I think you still remember the application that was about program tiering, and actually the research questions in our evaluation just as the same as this one. That is, first one, we see if Tether is useful to support debugging and understanding tasks in practice. And then we see is Tether useful to support program analysis? And then we finally check out if Tether is scalable for large O programs. We evaluate Tether using large reward Java applications rather than the benchmarks. And we finally select the seven large Java applications. Let's see the first case study. It's about if Taylor is useful for debugging and understanding tasks. And for the client, we select Clever, which is a static type static uh, analysis tool, generate sequential criteria. And for the slicing, we select a thin slicing, which is designed for the debugging and understanding tasks for the Java languages. And this is state of art of slicing technique to do this. Finally, Clever reports 77 sequential criteria. Most of them are about you know, fair operation related errors, such as you write to a file after you close it, Some, something like this. And the result here shows how Taylor helps a thin slicer in the debugging tasks. And there are four cases. And Taylor is found useful to, de to support debugging in these three cases, but not for the last one. Let's see. This these three cases one by one. So for the first case, it shows that Taylor has filtering out false alarms. This is because the carrier declined which generates the sequential criteria is a static analysis. So that means it may generate the sequential criteria with false positive. However, due to the good precision of program tiering, it may recognize some of these sequential criteria as false alarms because they are invisible, invisible passes. And However, since Lancer cannot do this. As a result, Clever reports 43 errors. And after program tiering, Taylor tells the user you do not to debug these 43 errors anymore because they are all false alarms. And we manually check these 43 errors and we found that they are indeed real false alarms. For these two cases, it shows that Taylor helps since Lancer in the debugging tax result and without as the extension algorithm. And, let's, uh, and both cases show that Taylor indeed improved the precision of thin slicer in these two tasks. Uh, let's take a simple example. So, Clara reports one error, and the thin slicer side 
This one error needs to debug nine statements. And after program tailoring, tailor further reduce four statements. And that means you need, only need to follow five statements in this debugging task for this error. And the further reduced four statements by tailor is indeed distributed in different methods and even in different classes, which are the real tough ones for the debugging tasks. So it explains Taylor is indeed useful in practice for the debugging tasks. And for the performance issue, for all the 77 sequential criteria, Taylor is one that always run, runs always faster than SyncSlicer. And for some specific cases, Taylor runs much faster than SyncSlicer. For the second case study, let's see how Taylor is it can help the program analysis. We basically want to show that for some cases, Taylor can make precise pro program analysis more scalable. So now let's take a POS2 analysis, for example. So this time, similarly, we select Solar, which is a static reflex analysis tool to generate sequential criteria, like this one, class object, mass object, then you invoke the method reflective at this reflective concept. Okay, and uh, static reflection analysis is a very important fundamental technique that can determine the size of the call graph. This is very essential for the program uh, static analysis. And if the program analysis part, we select the post two analysis provided provided by the Duke framework. And Solar is able to finding out to find out which reflective concepts are resolved imprecisely. And for all the evaluated programs, we found out there are nine in-process result reflective call signs. That means now we have nine sequential criteria temporal sequence leading to this in-process result call signs. So actually, this nine imprecisely resolved call signs could have been resolved precisely if we can use very precise post to analysis. This is because the precision of reflection analysis depends on the precision of its underlying post analysis. However, the precise post analysis is difficult to scale for the large OO programs in practice. For example, in our experiment, this is the most precise post analysis. But before Taylor, for all these nine cases, it cannot finish running within 10 hours. But after Taylor, the program becomes smaller and we found that five out of nine cases are scalable now. Now, that means you can leverage this precise personalized to analyze program again, and the result of the reflection analysis is very promising. That is, the precision of reflection analysis is significantly uh, improved. And uh, in our experiment, uh, we also tried traditional slicing, and it is found that it's not scalable for all these nine criteria. And, but Taylor is scalable for all these cases. Neither existing reflection analysis nor the slicing techniques can help reflection analysis achieve such precise result. And it is well known that program slicing is hardly scalable for large, especially old programs, even though the implementation is fairly well tuned. So now let's see if Taylor is scalable for large old programs. To do this, we conduct a stress test. And that means we randomly select uh, 50 sequential criteria for each application, and we have seven applications, so that means we have 350 sequential criteria. And then feed them to the SA based extension algorithm, then we get some extended SA and feed them to the SA based data formulas to tailor the program. And we found that our average tailor is scalable for 85% cases. And for all the scalable cases, tailor can finish running within 10 minutes. Actually, we have other interesting information about scalability of Taylor, but due to time limitation, I do not explain them here. If you are interested in them, please read our papers for details. So, this work brings a new dimension to program slicing by introducing sequential criteria. And the temporal ordering information in the sequential criteria is naturally inhabited in many real world applications, but have, have not been exploited by program slicing before. So as I've explained in this talk, you can see Taylor views are a natural connection among different research fields. So a lot of interesting future work is expected to be conducted to investigate their interplay. So now you can give us a sequence and we may tailor a different word for you. Thank you.
uh, very interesting work. Um, so I was wondering when you look up allocation sites to um, enhance these uh, sequences, um, do you use a, a flow insensitive of the shelf pointer analysis, or what were you using for this in your experiments? Yes, uh, yeah, identifying this allocation site, it has, actually it seems like in you know, the object sensitivity analysis, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, actually for now we only depend uh, on the pointer analysis which is the context sensitive, but for low insensitive analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is uh, provided by the suit framework. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I was wondering about the expressive uh, power of uh, your criteria. Are you talking about um, um, is it possible for an object to go through a sequence of type states or? Uh, is it, are you just looking at what functions have been called or can I even say is it possible for this object to go from, uh, um, uh, say the field have a, an odd uh, value to have an even number? What, to, what do you put in those uh, sequential criteria? Okay, actually in the sequential criteria it's about program positions and their other information. This includes, for example, the single object type state uh, sequences and the multiple object type state sequences. So it's not about properties of the objects? Yes, it's about position and ordering among them. Yeah. Can Casper be setting up while, while I ask my other question? Do you know whether your tool is sound or complete? So can you give a... Yes, a yes that's a good question, yes. Actually, you see in Java programs, if you want to analyze the old programs such as Java, it has some special features such as reflection, dynamics, class loading, multi threading, and native case, something like that. And the Taylor sound is, is based on the given interprocedural control flow graph. If the interprocedural control flow graph is built soundly, then Taylor is sound. So, for this work in our evaluation to you know, make uh, Taylor uh, can get the real uh, results, uh, we handle those reflection analysis and some dynamic loading and some native calls, and, but uh, not multi-striding. It is itself is also a challenging problem, so we do not handle it. But if your interprocessor control program supports multi-striding, then Taylor is sound, naturally. So I would say it's parametric sound. Your part is sound, but you are relying on something that is not the Yes, exactly. Uh, do you need to analyze the whole program or you can start from the last point of your sequential uh, condition? What, uh, what is the source of the scalability that you achieved? So yes, we analyzed the whole program, including application code and the reachable library code. Mm -hmm. And actually, in this slide, I did not introduce something about the scalability issues in the design. And uh, you can find, you know, the some methods in the paper for details. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks.